other parliamentary representatives, Mr. Subhash Pandey and Mrs. Pandey, representing the Pandey family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. A very pleasant good evening to each and every one of you, and welcome to this remembrance function that we're having in honor of the late Bastille Pandey. Never in my life have I seen such grief as befell this nation on Monday when we learned of the passing of our son, Bastille Pandey. Never in my life have I seen such an outpouring of love through all the media, mainstream and social media, for Bastille Pandey. Trinidad and Tobago has lost one of its great sons. Presentation College has lost one of its great sons. And in the true spirit of Presentation College, we decided to come together and have this function to honor our son, Bastille Pandey. We have a f uh, program this evening that basically takes us through a half an hour of prayers and worship. And then we go into the reflections and tributes that will be made by various, various people who are here this evening. We are all prayers men and women in the room tonight. And I say that to say that it is only me that will go through the protocol. Because once I am done, then we don't have any president, we don't have any member of parliament, we don't have any judge. We have prayers men here tonight to pay tribute to one of our great prayers men, Basdeo Pandey. So I would want for you to treat the event with the decency and the decorum that it deserves and um, we will be well set. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce to the podium our principal, Mr. Dexter Mitchell, who will bring some welcome remarks. Mr. Mitchell. So good night, everyone. As the servant leader of this very great college, it is my pleasure to, to welcome each and every one of you, not under the best of circumstances. Um, during my, this is my 10th year here, and this is the fourth kind of ceremony like this that I am present at. We did one for deceased Mr. Limak, our great music teacher, we did for Brother Michael when he passed. We did for former Prime Minister Patrick Manning. And uh, this evening we gather now to remember in a very fond way uh, Mr. Basdeo Pandey, former Prime Minister, former President, former everything to Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I could say that I know because the picture that you are seeing on the stage there was taken in 2017 when I invited Mr. Pandey to deliver the feature address at our prize day. In 2017, this young man that you are seeing on the stage there, Joel, on the side there in that banner, he would have topped the Caribbean in that year. And it was his idea, it was Joel's idea you know, he said, so why don't we get former Prime Minister one of his, you know, significant barrett? That was something that we knew him by as a champion for the poor. And that was Joel's idea, and Joel would have presented him. And we remember him taking it out right on the stage here and putting it on and so on. I am very privileged, and the college is very privileged to have worked and have uh, Mr. Basdeo Pandey worked with us over the years, career guidance. I, I remember the speech on that occasion where you could have heard a pin drop and he received a standing ovation. And one of the things that defines him, I remember going to 
a workshop that the Trade and Economic Development Unit at UE was having, and they invited uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Pandey and former Prime Minister Owen Arthur. They were two panelists, and they asked me to bring some students. And when we walked in the auditorium, Mr. Pandey got up, said to Mr. Owen Arthur, he said, this is my principal. And big hug and thing, and I feel good. You know, so on behalf of the college, I want to extend sincere condolences to his family. His brother is here and his sister-in-law, and we are indeed very grateful for your presence. Uh, Prime Minister Pandey was one of the finest that we have produced, and we have produced many over the years. In fact, on my way to Port of Spain today, I got a call from President's house telling me that we have won the President's Medal for 2021. That, I didn't even realize they didn't announce that. Um, they had just awarded it to one of our students, Niran Mahadeo Singh, and they will present it to him later in January. And so over the years, we have produced very outstanding people, many are here, you know, in this audience, many are live stream, looking at it, and uh, former Prime Minister Basdeo Pandey was one of them. And we are grateful that, you know, we shared him here at Presentation College. I remember in 2017, sitting next to him, you know, he said to me, you know, boy, I couldn't afford you know, to come from Princess Town and wherever, and somebody took me in, and somebody was making um, a statement at the time that prayers was only for rich people. And Mr. Pandey said, he ain't know the history of prayers. You know, so we are very grateful, and I'm very happy, you know, that we can gather here as a presentation family and say, well done, Master Pandey. You have served the people of Trinidad and Tobago well, and I know that you will continue to serve wherever God places you. So again, on behalf of the college, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Just a few housekeeping matters. The condolence book is at the back. Uh, for those of you who have not signed, you can sign. Washrooms are downstairs, through the door, through the steps, uh, down the steps. The first set of washrooms are ladies, and the second set of washrooms will be for gents. And we do have some refreshments at the back, water and soft drinks for those of you who may wish um, to refresh yourselves. So moving on with the program, ladies and gentlemen, I want to invite to the stage Pundit Rujanath Maraj from the Todd Street Mandir. He, apart from being a pundit, he's a prominent press man and a prominent lawyer in San Fernando. And he's going to be offering a word of prayer. Pundit Maharaj. Namaskar. Before we join in words of prayer and words of comfort and solace, Permit me a few moments to reflect on uh, what has been said thus far and the meaning and significance of this gathering this evening. In Hindu tradition, we refer to the word of satsang, the coming together of persons of noble and laudable intent. And this evening's gathering of the presentation family is indeed such a satsang. As we come tonight to celebrate the life of this great son of the soil of Trinidad and Tobago, I could not help but reflect on what our chairman, Mr. Edwards, said about the outpouring that came about on social media. And like many of you, I had the opportunity to view many things, but I viewed a clip of the late Bas Deopandi at a religious function a couple of years ago. And his speech lasted over 12 minutes, filled with humor and filled with wit, but it was something that resonated with me for someone who is approaching the age of 90, could have his wits about him in such a way, but his perspective on life is something that I wanted to share with each and every one of us this evening. He said there are two certain things in life. We all are born and we will all die. That is certain, there's no doubt, there's no question. 
And he held up his hand like that. He said, we are born and we would die. But what happens in between those two events? What takes place in the life of an individual between those two events? And in his perspective, he said, many persons aspire for many things. And he, being someone who held the highest office of the land, could have related to that quite tangibly. But in his mind, none of those things that are material, physical possessions, even relationships, offices that one may hold, titles that one may have, means anything unless one is happy. And he asked the question, rhetorically, what would make a person happy? And he said in his own way that the removal of hate and replacing that with love in one's heart is the true way to happiness. And I thought, how profound. As I see the image and the picture there, I reflect on the words of the presentation college hymn. Brave soldiers in this bitter strife for self-assertion in this life. Doesn't he look like a soldier with the baritone? Fighting for the downtrodden, doing the best that he could in the way in which he knew to make the lives of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago better, safer, happier. Did he succeed? History will judge him. But tonight as we come together to celebrate his life and his legacy, I offer my condolences to his family members who are here and those who are not here. On behalf of my own family, on behalf of the members of the Todd Street Monday in San Fernando, on behalf of the staff and members of the Hewitting Law School that I'm also a part of, we extend our condolences. And as we join together in prayer taken from Bhagavad Gita, we are reminded of our purpose in life in the same way that God reminded Arjun of what our true purpose here is. We are reminded that we are divine beings on a physical journey. And when this physical journey ends, as Mr. Pandey's has, we then move on to a different chapter where we continue in a different journey. And so tonight as we reflect, as we give thanks, as we express gratitude to him for all of his efforts and all of his accomplishments, we try to build on the legacy that he's left so that our country can continue to develop can become a safer place than it is today and where all persons in this country can indeed find an equal place and one filled with happiness and bliss. Whatever be our tradition, brothers and sisters, let us join together in reverence and in prayer as we pay tribute and as we offer solace to the family and as we pray for the soul, the Atma of the late Bastille Pandey. Hariyo. Om Sri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Sri Saraswate Namaha Om Sri Guru Charnakamale Bhyo Namaha Om Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Bande Jagat Guru Mukam Karoti Bachalam Angulang te ke kirim, yet kripata mahamandi, paramanandam amadavam. Wherever that Atma of the late son of Trinidad and Tobago may be at this time, we pray for the blessings of God that it would enjoy a peaceful transition and a peaceful journey, that it would be filled with bliss and happiness and serenity, and that all of his loved ones would indeed have that solace and comfort of Almighty God. O manadhi nede no deva, shanka chakra gadadhara, akshe pundari kaksha, preta moksha pradhobhava. Om shanti, 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 hadi om. Jai Sitaram. Thank you very much, uh, Pandit Rajanath Maharaj. I think all of us know that uh, Mr. Pandey was a devout practicing Hindu. 
and therefore we felt that it is most appropriate that our prayer and uh, worship segment should be um, focused on Hindu tradition. At this stage, I would like to invite to the stage Mr. Maniram Dilraj, who will do a couple of bhajans for us. Mr. Maniram Dilraj. जग चला जाते हैं सारायत का कौन तिकाना है एक दिन हमें भी जाना है एक दिन भी जाना है जग चला जाते सारा इसका कौन तिकाना है दिन हमें नहीं जाना है खूब मौज कर देखता माता खूब मौज कर देखता माता खेल ने को खेला कर लिए है तो कर ले बंदे कर ली है तो कर ले बंदे फिर नहीं आना है एक दिन एक दिन जग चला जाते सारा हित कान की काना है एक दिन हमें I extend condolences to the Pandey family, to the Press family, and to the country at large and everyone who is mourning the death of Mr. Pandey. And this song, I trust and hope you'll appreciate.
फिर जैसा याद याद करेगे दुनिया तेरा मेरा तो साना तेरे जैसा याद कहा याद कर दुनिया तेरा मेरा कौन मेरी जिंदगी सवार मुझको गले लगा के बेता दिया पलक मुझे काट से काटे मेरी जिंदगी सवार मुझे को गले लगा के बेता दिया पलक मुझे काट से काटे तारा तेरी यार हो मेरे तो खुद आना याद करेगी दुनिया तेरा मेरा तेरे के सायद कहा song and this song it's one made popular by Lady Bud Ram Holas जिनके लिए तूने महल सजा 
मतलब के यार सभी है परिये तुने दो दो दिन के जिंदगी दो दिन ये जिंदगी है प्यारे एक झूठ सपना गैरों के दुनिया में नहीं कोई बड़ा ये जिंदगी है प्यारे एक झूठ सपना गैरों के दुनिया में नहीं कोई अपना सबके रहते हो मैं हूँ दो दिन की जिंदगी है दो दिन कने दो दिन की जिंदगी है दो दिन कमी दो दिन की जिंदगी है दो दिन कमी दो दिन की जिंदगी है दो दिन Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayoram Dilraj and friends. Uh, we now move on to another prayer, this time by Pundit Vishwanath Maharaj. Vishwanath Maharaj is a past student uh, who is the son of a former teacher at prayers, Kapil Deo Maharaj. Some of you might remember him, who himself was a Pundit. So from very um, good line, lineage. Can I welcome you to the stage, Vishwanath? Thank you, Joel. Namaste, Sitaram, everyone. Let us pray. Om Gajananam Bhuta Ganadi Sevitam Kapitha Jambu Palachar Bhakshanam Uma Sutam Shoka Vinashakar Kam Namami Vigneshwar Pad Pankajam Ladies, gentlemen, we are assembled here to recognize the life, the achievements of Mr. Bastev Pandey and recall our camaraderie with our departed Presman. Now, a Hindu perspective on his political life. Hinduism has four parts for the personal Atma, the Jeeva Atma, the soul, to merge, to reunite with the universal soul, the Paramatma. One of those parts is called Karma Yoga, the path of action. As a politician, the deceased Mr. Pandey, he would have been attracted to this, to this path of action. But what would distinguish the politician from us regular citizens is the scope of their influence. Hinduism also propounds that one's life must be geared towards the betterment of our society, which is also supposed to be the aim of politics. So there was a nice congruence and con con merger there. Now, Mr. Pandey, he came from a poor agricultural background. He worked several labor-intensive jobs in Trinidad and in England in order to finance his tertiary education. His time in England abroad I am sure would have influenced his dreams for what Trinidad and Tobago could become. Early in his career, he made a choice to enter the public domain in order to help people better their lives through the trade union movement. This endeavor morphed into politics, which had the same objective. Now, his brilliance, his determination, and his ability to work with people enabled him to become the prime minister of the country after laboring many years in the opposition. His quick wit, as was mentioned earlier, was enjoyed by everybody, sometimes even the recipient. Now, in 1986, 
he became the first Hindu minister of government and therefore the first to pledge his oath on the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. But there was a delay in his swearing in as this Hindu religious text was not available at President's house. Hindus were very proud that Mr. Pandey chose to wait until a Bhagavad Gita was brought in rather than accede to any affirmation. He was also the first Indian Prime Minister breaking a long-held belief. One of the first public places he visited after becoming Prime Minister was the Dow village Mandir where puja was being conducted on his behalf. He performed pujas and he installed jhandis at the PM's residence. His love for local Indian classical music is well known and he was an accomplished tabla player. Right? His, term, as, his terms rather, as Prime Minister assisted in introducing Hindu practices or beliefs into to many citizens and many citizens became familiar with some Hindi words because of Mr. Pandey. Mr. Pandey also introduced, yes now, a moment please. Yeah. Yeah. He introduced a lot of legislation that we take for granted today that empowers ordinary citizens. And I think that it is a fair statement that our country is a much better country today because of the contribution of Mr. Pandey. As he rides off into the sunset in his usual dramatic flair, let us pray to Bhagwan on behalf of his soul. I ask you all to please stand and clasp your hands. As we turn to God, we say, O Vishnu Bhagwan, you hold the tools of justice, the sunk, the discus, and the club. Please bestow your liberation on the departed soul. O Krishna Bhagwan, you are merciful, and you are the refuge of the living. Be compassionate to those who are drowning in the ocean of worldly existence. Om Anadini Dhano Deva Shanka Chakra Gadadhara Akshaya Pundari Kaksha Preta Moksha Pradobhava Om Krishna Krishna Kripalo Tvam Gati Nam Gathirbhava Sansararnava Magnanam Prasiddha Purushottamam O Bhagwan, you, you are our mother and father, our friend and companion. You are our education and wealth. You are our everything. Om Tvameva Mata Chapita Tvameva Tvameva Bandhus Chasaka Tvameva Tvameva Vidya Dravinam Tvameva Tvameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Om Shanti 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 Om Sadgati Thank you. Please resume your seats. Thank you very much for that prayer, Pundit Vishwanath, Vishwanath Maharaj. Coming onto the stage uh, to render a couple more bhajans for us would be Ravi Sanilal and musicians. Ravi is the current biology, biology teacher at Prez, uh, but he's very much into the um, Hindu religion, and he will entertain us now uh, with some, a couple of bhajans.
Sitaram, pleasant evening to all members gathered here. It is indeed an honor to be part of a function like this. Paying homage to a great individual. There aren't enough words to really sum up the impact that Mr. Pandey would have had on the lives of all of us in this country. And when we look at the media, we read the newspaper, everybody has their own opinions. You know, the level of development within the country at a time when the economic situation was not as good as it is today or has been in the past couple of years. My first interaction with Mr. Pandey would have been around 1998. I was in primary school. And it is something that would have stayed with me all these years. At that point, uh, at San Francisco Presbyterian School, there was the construction of a new building. And he, along with the then Minister of Education, were invited to open that building. And of course, a towering figure of authority, but mainly humility. And that's what stick with us throughout the years. So condolences, not only to his immediate family, but to all those who held him there in their hearts. You know, sometimes we think that the world is poorer when we lose people who are dear to us. But in this case, we are indeed richer with his legacy that he's left behind. Kastu. Sarvangi Hari Channanam Sulalita Pante Cha Muktavalim Gopastri Parivesti To Vijayate Gopal Churaman Hari Kabhajana Jana Bina Nileshubhatiya Particular Vajan, it says that a life lived without devotion is like a deer that's filled with oil but there's no wick. A deer that's filled with oil can give no light. So we must always inculcate devotion in our, into our lives. Harika bhajan kare le mere matiya bhajan bina Oh, <laughs> 
song it says you know while we are in our mother's wombs we make that petition to God that Bhagavan let us out into the world each day I'll praise you I'll honor you and I'll stay on the right path but what happens when we come into the world we get caught up with work with job family life doing all kinds of things for sensual enjoyment and we forget about God we forget that plea that we've made, that bargain that we made, that promise that we made. And how can we expect to find favor with God if we go back on our promises? बाहर हूँ हरि भक्त करो तेरी कारण लोक भये दुखिया इस आई जगत में भूल गयो तेरी कारण लोक भये दुखिया तभी दी हल है मन चेतन करो भजुराम सिया राम मिलन कब हो राम मिलन कब हो सियाराम मिलन कब हो
and praise of God. It says that Oh Lord, you are the only being that can take away our sorrows. And at a time of bereavement, who do we turn to? We turn to God. That all merciful, all powerful God by whom poison can be transformed into nectar. And we put our faith and our trust into God. That's the only being that will take us across this house of God, The ocean of pain, of torment, of unhappiness. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vasudeva Vishweshwaraya Adi Purusha Parampare Alek Purushaya Namo Namaha Jai Krishna Hare Shri Krishna Hare Dukhiyo ke Dukha Dur Kare Jai 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 Krishna Hare Jai Krishna Hare i 
Thank you very much, Mr. Ravi Sunilal and friends for those wonderful renditions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to close off this uh, segment of the, what we call the prayer and worship, um, this segment, I would like to, uh, to bring to the stage um, Deacon Roy Ragunanan from Our Lady of Perpetual Health, Help Church, um, and I hope I say this right, the church that oversees the religious side of Presentation College. And if I don't say it right, Mr. Mitchell will um, deal with me tomorrow. Uh, please welcome to the stage, um, Mr. Deacon Roy Ragunana. Could you all stand, please? My dear friends, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us together as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray asking God to gather our brother Basdeu to himself. Let us pray. Lord our God, the death of our brother Basdeu recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in our lives. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain as we pray for Bastille and for those who love him. For Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit. Thanks so much, uh, Deacon Roy Ragunanan. Uh, and that ends, that ends the prayer and worship segment, ladies and gentlemen. We will move straight away into the reflections and tributes uh, section of the program. Um, here we will have a number of um, tributes being paid by persons interspersed with some of the videos, there are about five videos that are circulating on social media, and we thought we'd show you some of those videos. Uh, we also have some entertainment as well, so a mixture of tributes, videos, and um, entertainment. Um, we'd like to start off the first segment. Uh, we're ready with the first video, which is the acceptance speech that uh, Basio Pande gave when he was appointed Prime Minister uh, for the very first time. We thought it was so sobering and so fitting, even today. So I turn over to uh, the video operator, Mr. Terence John, to bring on that video first, please. The following is an address to the nation 
by the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Basdeo Pandey. Fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, my sisters and brothers, I thank you most sincerely for the confidence you have reposed in me and the party which I have the honor to lead, the United National Congress. On behalf of my colleagues and on my own behalf, I accept that honor with great humility, but with, with an even greater determination to serve all the peoples of Trinidad and Tobago. I want to thank all those who have worked so hard to bring about this moment. I know how many resources, how much energy, sweat, and emotional stress you have invested in this campaign. I ask you to accept your victory with humility and generosity. Trinidad and Tobago is a difficult country to govern because of its highly pluralistic nature, its diversity and its fragmentation. I've always been of the firm conviction that without unity, this nation cannot go very far. Our first task, therefore, must be to unite this nation as it has never been united before. We must make sure that every man, woman, and child in this beloved land of ours genuinely and sincerely feel that they belong. Our first task is to ensure that every human being who inhabits this land is made to feel wanted, secure, and safe, that he or she will not be discriminated against for any reason whatsoever, and that here each and everyone shall truly find an equal place. No one needs feel insecure because of a change in the government. I regard your safety as my most important and immediate task. I've already contacted the security forces and I have been assured of their support in protecting this nation from harm, both from within and without. There is much work to be done and only together we can ever do it. The sole objective of the new government is the happiness and well-being of all our peoples. Let us agree on that, even if we disagree on how to get there. Once our objectives are clear, and we are all committed to them, then together we are bound to find consensus on the methods and strategies and tactics for achieving our goals. Pulling together as one people, we can achieve anything. In keeping with our philosophy and in keeping with our promise to unite this nation, I have invited all the parties that won seats in the House of Representatives to join with the United National Congress to establish a government of national unity, a national front government, so that together we may confront and win the battle against crime and drugs, unemployment and poverty, the alienation of our youths and our senior citizens, rising prices and the, the deteriorating public utilities. So far, only Mr. A. N. R. Robinson and Ms. Pamela Nicholson of the National Alliance for Reconstruction have accepted that invitation. I am very grateful for that. Without that gesture, we would not have been able to form a government, far less a government of national unity. I can only hope that other members of parliament will respond to my call. The elections are over. We must now run the country. I thank all those who have voted for us in all the constituencies, whether we won them or not. I thank all our candidates, those who were successful and those who were not. I thank the hundreds of volunteers and activists who gave so much of their time and energy and commitment and devotion in this campaign. Our staff at party headquarters and all the constituency offices. I thank my wife Oma for being with me during the campaign and always. And I thank my children who have had to endure my absence for so many years of their young lives. A special thanks to all those who have so generously provided the resources without which this occasion would not have been possible. I thank all those who have contributed to this campaign in one way or another. I thank all those who had had the faith in the UNC and have been with me since the beginning. I also wish to place on record my thanks to Mr. Patrick Manning for his services to the government and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. There is much work to be done and so little time in which to do it, but I know that together we can do it. I would like to mobilize all our human resources in the task of nation building. 
I therefore wish to extend an invitation to all citizens who are willing to join in the struggle to build a just and equitable nation, to volunteer for service to your country. I know that there exist in our country enormous talent and human resources, men and women who are willing and able and eager to serve this country in some way or the other, if only they are given a chance so to do. To such persons, I extend an invitation to come forward and identify yourself. Let the new government know who you are and in what capacity you are prepared to serve. If you so desire, you may contact immediately the office of the Prime Minister indicating your willingness to serve and the capacity in which you are prepared to serve. Let us all pray that Almighty God will give us the wisdom and intelligence to know what is our duty and the courage and the strength to do it. Once more, thank you all and may God bless our nation. That was an address to the nation by the Prime Minister of Trinidad. So these are the words that he uttered. Um, at the start of his um, leadership of the country. And isn't it true that this is what he str strove to do uh, for all of his life, um, even before he became prime minister and long after? We start the tributes. Um, and first up, I'd like to introduce, um, to ask Keith Clifford to come to the podium Keith has um, many, many um, accolades, one of them being, as well, a cricket commentator, but we're calling him to open the batting tonight. Um, please, Keith, uh, to the podium. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Batson, sorry about it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, presentation men. It's an honor for me to be here this afternoon to open the batting, as it were, as we pay tribute to Mr. Bastel Pan, the deceased. And we all have many stories I'm sure we can share about our relationship with him. I will take too long, so I'll share just a few. In 1985, I was privileged to be president of our association then. And a small group of, of presidents, as, as myself leading this group, we decided that Mr. Bastille Pandey would be our past student of the year in 1985. We see into the future, we know that this gentleman had great skill. I recognize, same, I, I would say, one of the best functions the college has ever had. And it was the first year we had uh, the wives or the significant others of presentation men attend our function. And Mr. Pandey did us extremely proud. That's item one. The second one I will share in 1996. When the Olympics were coming around, I saw Mr. Pandey, and he was responsible for the naming of the Hazley Crawford Stadium and the house in which Mr. Hazley Crawford lives today. That is the second. And in 1998, when Press celebrated our 50th anniversary, he made Prime Minister's residence open to us, and he hosted many functions, team, many of his friends there, as he reminisced about the good times and the good years he spent here at Press. So I'm honored to start it as a will, and I will keep it very short and thank Mr. Pandy for all he has done for us for, as a people, for our country, and we'll be forever grateful. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Clifford, for your reflections and setting the tone in terms of um, brevity of speeches. <laughs> I would now like to introduce Judge Anthony Lucky um, to the podium to give his tribute to Basio Pande. Judge, Judge Lucky. Lucky. My brothers and sisters, today we gather to celebrate the life of a remarkable individual, former Prime Minister, Honorable Basile Pandey. He was not just a politician, but an astute one, a fearless leader who ventured where angels feared to tread. Basile Pandey possessed the characteristic traits to hold a lion 
in a fight. Meta metaphorically speaking, although, if Baz fought in real life with a lion, I would bet on Basdev Pandey. Throughout his career, Basdev Pandey demonstrated a keen intellect and a profound commitment to his ideals. He was a man who tirelessly fought for justice, equity, and the betterment of his nation. His unwavering dedication to his political beliefs was truly commendable. His constant call for constitutional reform in order to achieve our best democracy and greatest social justice will continue for ages to come. Basdev Pandey was not one to shy away from challenging situations or difficult decisions. He fearlessly tackled the most pressing issues of his time, always standing up for the marginalized and disenchantrized. disenchantrized. His courage in the face of adversity inspired not only his supporters, but also his political adversaries. His legacy as an astute politician is a testament to his ability to navigate the complex world of politics with wisdom and insight. He left an indelible mark in the political landscape, leaving behind a legacy of servant leadership and a passion for the welfare of our country. As we bid farewell to Basdev Pandey, let us remember him as a true lion-hearted politician, a char charismatic and witty leader who was unafraid to tread the path less taken, and a man whose impact on the political realm will be remembered for generations to come. His legacy will continue to inspire us all to strive for a better, more just society. Rest in peace, my dear friend, Basil, and thank you for your remarkable contribution to our nation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Judge Lucky, for those um, very warm words. We, we move on out. Oh, I should say that in organizing the function, we spoke with some people and identified them uh, to speak on the program. We will, in fact, have an open floor segment where those who are not specifically called up um, would have an opportunity to come up and uh, give their own tributes as well. We have the second video which is from Banyan with Ronnie Williams, where um, some discussions on the acting career, careers of both men uh, took place. Is it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your wanting true, and it shall please me well. For mine own part, I shall be glad to learn of noble men. You wrong me in every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. Peace, peace, you durst not so have tempted I him. I durst not. No. What durst not tempt him? For your life, you durst not. Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. Folks, this is not drama in real life behind the scenes of Parliament, but it is our opposition leader, Mr. Basdev Pandey, and our Minister of State Enterprises, Ronnie Williams, here with us at Gael to talk about their careers in acting. Mr. Pandey, you have been a Shakespearean actor at some point? Not a Shakespearean actor. When I was young, about 13, 14, we had a drama group 
up at the village where I lived in New Grant, and then I went to London. Who was the other person? Yeah. Lloyd Phillips. He used to be the parliamentary uh, representative for Princess Town between the years 1971 and 76. Uh, 71 and 76, yes. I went to London in 57 and went to drama school for two years, then did some television, some work with the BBC or radio, and did three films, Nine Hours to Rama, Man in the Middle, Brigand of Kandahar, and did a stint in a stage play at the Savoy Theatre that ran for a year in 1961. Mr. Williams, mm. you did anything like that? Well, I never went to drama school. I'm not a star boy of screen like uh, Basdeo here. But um, my, my, my acting, I was more the legitimate theatre, shall we say. Oh, dear. I started, <laughs> off, started off one Shakespearean play at St. Mary's College, Twelfth Night. I did about four, five productions at the Hart House Theatre, the University of Toronto. Three of them were Shakespearean plays, and when I came back to Trinidad, I was in about six or seven plays, I think, until I cut short my career in, in acting to uh, concentrate on making money. <laughs> but um, has this acting helped you in your later careers as a money maker, as a politician? I would say yes. I would say what it has done is, by being involved in drama, it has exposed us to the significance of culture as an aspect of the development, the total development of human beings. And as persons and as politicians, it is bound to uh, operate favorably, both for ourselves and the community, I hope. Yes, well, I think that one of the things people tend to look on actors is a rather dilettante group of mincing people, you know, airy-fairy people which they are not, it requires a tremendous amount of discipline. And, and that is what I learned from it. And, and my exposure to the theater, to the arts, if I may get a bit personal, was of tremendous use to me when I was chairman for 10 carnivals of the Carnival Development Committee, which uh, somebody seems to come on the scene recently and thinks he has a bright new idea that carnival is the theater of the streets. It has always been. It also so, permits you to interrelate with people. If you are an actor or you're involved in that kind of work, you must interrelate with people. And in order to perform any kind of social activity, you have to interrelate with people. So that I agree with Ronnie totally that the discipline that one acquires um, in participating in drama is bound to redound to the benefit of the human being. Acting is not just hard work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of hard work. It's not just lights, camera, and action. <laughs> OK, thank you. Thank you. Member of Parliament for San Fernando East and Junior Minister of Finance to pay his tributes to Bastia Pandey. Good evening, everyone. I hope you are well. Thank you so much for coming for us to celebrate the life of a great past student of this amazing and venerable institution, former Prime Minister, Mr. Basdeo Pandey. I, I tell people that Basdeo Pandey was what I would call a one of one. That means none before him and none to come. <laughs> he may be one of the greatest political strategists this region has ever seen. And of course, his wit and charisma were unparalleled. Even as the son of his arch rival, <laughs> even I would have to look at him sometimes in total admiration. I'll give you a story. One time when I was in university in the US, I would listen to political speeches in Trinidad and Tobago over the internet. And Mr. Pandey was on a platform somewhere. And he, he, said, he said, you know, when you lose three times, they call it a hat trick. He said, after next election, I'm going to beat Manning for the third time. When you lose three times, they'll call it a Patrick. <laughs> now, this man is trying to end my father's political career. And I'm the one laughing harder than everybody else. The, Basdeo, the former prime minister, Mr. Basdeo Pandey, was a gentleman that I would describe as someone that was difficult to not like. And I cannot say that there are too many people in my life that I would describe that way. He was charming, 
charismatic, intelligent, that he also knew how to relate to the average and common person. When Mr. Pande spoke, he didn't, you know, some people speak with their mouths, some speak with their hands. Mr. Pande spoke with his entire being. It was like he was speaking to you with his soul and you felt and you understood what it is he was trying to say. People would say that Mr. Pande and my father, during the course of their careers, had political battles. But I would prefer to describe it as a dance. It, it was more art, it was choreography. What they did required so much skill and, and dexterity that I couldn't call it a battle. And there's an element of, of intelligence and craft and art to what it is they did that I think is sorely lacking in today's politics. And I think modern politicians can learn a lot from what it is they did back in that era. Sometimes we forget that the acrimony that we show each other sometimes trickles down to the greater society. And that is not to anyone's benefit. So, Mr. Pandey, I am grateful for all that you've done for Trinidad and Tobago, all that you've done to bring pride and glory to this proud institution. And I would say God's speed and God's blessing and care to his wonderful family. Thank you. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Manning. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Samlal Singh, our next speaker, has had a very transformational effect on Presentation College. First of all, with the Past Students uh, Association, and now with his involvement with Prestige, where we have now, um, we have the biggest and best FET in San Fernando, I think in Trinidad, and contributing so much to capital works in the college. Um, Stephen, even before you come up, he deserves a round of applause. I now invite to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stephen Samlal Singh, to make his tribute to the late Basteo Pandey. Stephen? Stephen? Thanks very much, Joel. Um, I consider myself the, the last bowler, the last batsman on this team. So those kind words are very um, greatly appreciated. I wish to extend, first of all, sincere condolences to the Auntie Omar, the girls, and the extended Pandey family during this somber period. I wish them peace and strength at this time. A number of headlines read, a giant has fallen. Many persons on social media echo the same. Basio Pandey hasn't fallen. He had a full life and was loved by many. He couldn't fall. He's finally at rest. I'm sad that I won't see him and interact with him. I'm happy that in his last year of his life, he had the opportunity to plant his garden, play with his dogs, exercise, lime, and continue to be the life of the party. Basio Pandey was an Edinburgh, a man of the people who gave willingly of his time and knowledge. I remember my recent interactions with him were over the last two months, once at CPL cricket in Trinidad, and then he flew to Guyana to see more cricket. That's a retirement, eh? And um, another time at a restaurant in San Fernando where he was celebrating uh, Auntie Uma's birthday. We embraced warmly, and the first thing he said was, what's next on the press calendar? He loved his alma mater. He was really missed an edition of Prestige, and that caused all sorts of nightmares for us when he came into prestige because the crowd followed him. So, Marshall and Cassini stage, Pandey in the back, and you know where everybody is. Taking pictures and hugging up and, you know, warmth, the warmth that he exuded. Um, at the annual reunion, he showed his ability to bridge generations. I have been fortunate, based on my role in the college for the last 15 years, to interact with him a number of times, and we've developed a relationship where when we meet each other, he'll always tell me something insightful, something important. And even today, in a very heated session I had, I remember some of the words he told me, and all was well for me. So I appreciate that aspect of his, um, you know, his eagerness or willingness to not be stopped by a bodyguard or to be stopped by anybody else, and share a few kind words, a hug, 
And I saw it at the reunion. I think there's a video that might come up, a famous video might come up later on, where that one was a real buzz. Um, uh, Manning Senior and Pandey were at the reunion, and that one was an even greater nightmare because we had the whole crowd moving en masse wherever they moved, and that was a great day. I hope, I hope the um, video is available this evening. Um, one thing recently, um, and you might see a video for this one too, he received uh, a berry, as I mentioned, in the picture there. And um, interestingly, since yesterday, we've been inundated with calls from as far as US, UK, and even further, Port of Spain, asking for these, if we have these um, replica um, berries to, for, for sale. So under the Pasture Association, trying to find a way to get these online and put on the um, emblem. So that's the type of, uh, again, enigmatic kind of pull that he had. I am um, I, humble and grateful to know the man and I'll miss him daily. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Um, we have now the third video, a little acting stint um, in a movie with Robert Mitchum. Yes, sir, go ahead. On the subject of political consequences, I think it is right to say that this is a very broad topic for not only the murderer, but the... Sir, this is not a forum. Now, if you have a question, would you please ask it? I was merely trying to explain, sir, that my readers would ask this question. Is there any justice apart from might? No. Well, who's that question directed at? I think possibly the gentleman for the defense. Justice exists only in its own right. It exists apart from power and apart from might. Expedience can have no part in justice. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any more? Very short, um, but part of his professional acting career. Moving on with the tributes, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to, uh, to, uh, to, introduce to you and to ask to come to the stage former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Works and former independent senator, Mr. Stephen Kreese, who will pay his tribute and give his reflections on Basdeo Pandey. Mr. Kreese. Good evening. Thank you, uh, Mr. Master Ceremonies. Just a slight correction. Um, it's former Ministry of Local Government, not Ministry of Works. So when you're coming across any bottle, do associate me <laughs> with that. Good. Um, I want to take this opportunity, of course, to extend my condolences to the family and to Subhas Pandey. This is the first time we have crossed each other's part in many years. I think you were the one who had told me that my great aunts in St. Julian Village used to iron for Baz in the early days. Good, and I always remember that when I see him because sometimes the shirt was a little bit rougher than I think. <laughs> but um, the humor aside, my first interaction um, with the late Prime Minister was actually in relation to my involvement in the OWTU. Um, growing up, I, I was at one stage an uh, education research officer in the Faisabad Palaseco branch, and that's where I first met um, the late Prime Minister. Um, in those days, he was busy, I think, writing in the vanguard. I don't know if the vanguard is still around, right? But I think you remember the days when he was chief cook and bottle washer. In the vanguard, I think there are only two other people who came up to that standard. The other would have been um, Patrick Chocolingo, who wrote nearly everything in the bomb, and um, Walter Anamontudo, good, who was a prolific pamphleteer, good, and probably 
wrote everything that he, he published. Good. Um, and Basdeo Pande belongs to that tradition of Trinidadians who um, were committed to the word that they believed in and, you know, dedicated themselves to educating others and what we call now in the um, social media age of sharing. Good. Um, and I remember the, at that first session that they had for young, at that time I would have been in my 20s. Um, I'm going to be 70 next month, so getting old like you, right? Um, at that session they had, that seminar they had for, you know, a wannabe um, activist, um, George Weeks spoke, good, and he was, you know, iconic as per usual, and, and he was the first um, leader I saw at Berion in those days. And then afterwards, uh, then black-haired, uh, Basil Bande spoke, good. And it was interesting, you know, the, the difference in stature. Um, Pande was diminutive, George Weeks was tall and barrel-shaped. Um, but the power of the speeches was on the same level, good? And um, I always remember how awesome that day was, good, in terms of these two gentlemen, long ways from being parliamentarians at that stage, good, um, how impactful they were. And the insight which they left us with um, took me through all my trade union years because I went on to get involved in PSA and so on. And, um, but that moment um, has not been eclipsed by anything else, you know. So that when, um, when I came across that statement that um, Justice Lucky referred to, that if you see, you know, Basdeo Pande and a lion locked in the same room, feel sorry for the lion. And I think that is really where I would want to leave it in terms of how he has impacted the society. Um, coming from very humble be beginnings in St. Julian Village, uh, just outside Princess Tongue, and putting St. Julian Village on the map. So I was proud when Subhas told me about you know the connection between the two families. Um, out of St. Julian Village. Good. So, again, thanks to his family for sharing Basil Pandey with us. Thanks to his trade union, thanks to his political party. But I think as we are here, we should say thanks to Presentation College for bringing him up the way this college did. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kreese. Ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker doesn't want to speak. He wants to sing. And we invite him to come to the stage and sing for us. Let's welcome to the stage budding international superstar, Derek Smith. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my production artist, manager, whatever you want to call him, um, has surprised me, really. But I will still sing, because I love singing. But I want to pay tribute to this legend, I call him. And um, I, 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 to talk about him will take me the whole night. Um, but I will just read a message that I sent to Michaela the moment I got the news. If I choke up a little bit, please, you know, forgive me. Good night, Michaela. 
I just got the news, the sad news of dad's passing. Your dad was a great man in so many humble ways. A great leader who stood out on the world stage. When I think of him, which I do so many times, the words inclusiveness and humanity immediately comes to mind. He was a great human being, first and foremost. He had a heart as big as the world. He genuinely loved people, and because of this evident trait, was loved by all those he came directly or indirectly in contact with. What a beautiful human being. God has a special place in the beautiful pastures in heaven for him. He is with his God, our God. I'm hearing the tassa drums as the angels greet him. I love this man more than many other men I have ever known. For this, his memory will be forever be etched in my mind until we meet again in the heavenlies. I hope Almighty God speaks in heavenly terms to you and your beautiful family to celebrate rather than mourn his passing. Even in passing, he was chosen by God to leave his earthly journey, as we call it, on a very significant day, the first calendar day of a new year. What an honor. It is as though God is saying to us, take note of your leader as he represented what I always wanted for you, a true leader who I, God, can say, well done, true and faithful servant. You have completed your mission. Sincerest condolences to the Pande family. You have everything to feel proud of. We, the people of this beautiful twin island, Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and I dare say the world, has lost a true leader, hero of the likes of Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela. We cherish his memories. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want to say more. I think while I was writing this, it came directly from my heart. At the same moment, I got the news. I wish Uma was here, I wish Michaela was here, but brother, you are here. Your brother was so, something else. I wanted to sing my way, because I think he did it his way. And he, he was fearless in doing it his way. I remember I was the MC when he became prime minister. And I remember Brian, your dad, walking in. Of course, I'm your dad's good friend too. And um, your dad came in late and took some real pecong in that point of your club. Real pecong. And I remember that joke you gave, you know, the third, the fourth would be a hat trick, not a hat trick. <laughs> that was really funny. But Basio Pande was truly, I met him in a party as well. And when I went to the bar, he stood behind him. He was a little embryated, you know. So I held his back and I said, you know, a scotch is not a scotch without coconut water. And politics in Trinidad is not politics without Basio Pandey. So glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Mr. Mark, you want to come? Glory, glory, hallelujah is true this marching on. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Derek. Um, we show the fourth video now. This was alluded to by Stephen in his um, presentation. This is the Prez reunion um, when um, Mr. Manning and Mr. Pandey attended and had a really great time. 
Basil Pandey played a game of cards and clearly he was having a lot of fun as an old boy of Presentation College San Fernando. He was relaxed and drank a Coca-Cola as he played. A little later he was joined by another famous old boy, his once political arch-rival Patrick Manning. They chatted for quite some time, Manning gesturing as he sees the camera. But like old buddies, they continued, joined by one of the oldest past students of the school, Pandey becoming more and more animated, clearly enjoying himself. Soon Mr. Manning would come into his own, looking more relaxed, he too began talking some more, the two sticking together through the day. Music teacher Cynthia Lee Max announced the tribute. The tribute was Frank Sinatra's My Way. The two men haven't done it their way in politics, and they were clearly touched by it too. And what has it got? It got sweeter. The two would walk out into the yard, Mr. Pandey, the older old boy, leading the way, pointing out different things to Mr. Manning. And when they stopped for a picture together with a woman and a baby, I don't kiss no baby <laughs> out here it was far more relaxing for them, greeting more and more people and being applauded. <laughs> the president of the Old Boys Association invited them to be at home and they were both given gifts in plastic bags. I'd like to hear a big, big cheer for our two former past students, Prime Ministers Basdio Pandya and Patrick Manning. Hip, hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip, hip! Hooray! Proud to be! Hooray! Mr. Pandey was nothing short of the witty silver fox he's been dubbed to be, evoking laughter all along. A check of $20,000 was being given to needy children out of the Prime Minister's charity golf tournament, which Mr. Pandey started. And about that tournament, he joked some more. This check uh, comes from the Prime Minister's Golf Classic tournament and represented by... <laughs> And, and, the, and, the, okay. and the tradition continues. One love, one They asked Mr. Pandey about his feelings, and after heralding the role of the school in the lives of many, he added, And I'm extremely happy. I regret only one thing, that because of the problems Mr. Manning has given me over the years, <laughs> I have not had the time to devote to my alma mater. Now that he has released me from that burden, I assure you that I will now be devoting a lot of time to my old school. Mr. Manning too focused on the greatness of the school before taking his turn on Mr. Pandey. And now that um, Basdeo Pandey is no longer an enemy, now, now, now that we have a, a common enemy, we can, we can, work, <laughs> we can, we can work together. Wish you all well. Thank you. Happy together with things in common. They both went to presentation San Fernando. They were both prime ministers and opposition leaders and both relinquished leadership of their parties in the same year. Quite nice. Um, it's probably the most uh, circulated and most watched video of um, the prime ministers. Um, that um, even today, even now, it's circulating on social media quite a lot. Uh, continuing with the, um, the tributes, I would now like to invite the first citizen of San Fernando, um, His Worship, the Mayor Robert Paris, to bring his reflections and his tribute. All protocols having been observed, um, we are in a great institution, Presentation College, so I acknowledge each and every one of you press men here, and also add to the chorus of well-wishers, giving condolences to the great Basdeo Pandey. As a young person in politics, I also, also reflect often 
on the leaders that this country has had. Obviously, I've had much, much interaction with former Prime Minister Manning. But there would be no, in Trinidad politics, there would be no Patrick Manning if there were no Basdale Pandey. And young politicians of this era could learn so much, so much from these two great gentlemen. Watch the video there. When Mr. Pandey was calling for a unified government in that time. I was away studying abroad at that time, keeping a keen eye on Trinidad and Tobago's politics. And you think to yourself, I wonder if this could really work, boy. And you know, then you listen to Mr. Pandey in his later years in the politics, and you would have heard somewhat of a change in him whereby he spoke about not the government, but he spoke about the broken governance in this country. And then I reflect now of myself, being a young person, an artist myself, Mr. Pandey being an actor. That, that's a form of art because he spoke about culture, the importance of culture. And more persons in culture, I believe, needs to get involved with politics because we do actually really have an impact on humanity. As Brian said, we give everything. Because that's how we are wired, that's how we are built. And we talk and give from the heart. And when I think of what politics has evolved into this country, we really, really, really need to learn from leaders like Mr. Basdeo Pandey. I can remember one interaction I had in the Piaco International, ironically, Piaco International um, Airport Lounge. I don't know who, if I was meeting somebody or whatever, but I heard a loud calling, and Mr. Pandey said, well, everyone here is adults, right? He said to me, you little bastard. And I'm looking around and I'm looking around and I say, yes, you, come here. And I go, he said, tell your Uncle Patrick that I love him. I say, Mr. Pandey, I think you could tell him that yourself, you know. So I proceeded to call Uncle Patrick on the phone. And I said, Uncle Patrick, look, Pandey here, he tell me to tell you that how he love you. And Uncle Patrick said, tell Pandey that I said, haul his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed and I laughed. And Pandey said to Mr. Pandey said, I love you, Patrick, I love you. And he said, I love you too. That level of humanity in the politics of Trinidad and Tobago today, far be it for me to say, is gone. As the first citizen of the city of San Fernando, I always reflect and always ask myself what those two great gentlemen would do. And when faced with any adversity with my counsel, I always remind them that we are here for a greater purpose. We might agree to disagree sometimes, but we are here to serve the people of San Fernando. And that should be your greatest feat. That is what you're supposed to be working towards. Don't practice the petty politics. The petty politics, when you start to practice that, it only affects the people that we represent. And far be it for me to say, sometimes I warn them that if we open that door and let the people who voted for us see how some of you act, they perhaps would never vote again. I like to be honest and real. Mr. Pandey, in my estimation, not only was he a great politician, but he was a greater human being. And I think that 
this is indeed an honor for me as a young as a young man as a young politician who admired the politicians from that era and mirror their desires for the development of this country and now that Brian and myself have taken up the mantle and we have the button on this length. I pledge myself to do more in honor of Mr. Pandey, obviously Uncle Patrick as well, but definitely his memory should be something that will live on in the minds and the hearts of every right-thinking Trinidadian and Tobagoonian. I thank you sincerely. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we now have our first entertainment item, a pan interlude by student Jovan Rambaran. Please welcome Jovan onto the stage.
Thank you very much, Jovan, for those two wonderful renditions. 
Moving on with the tributes, it is my pleasure at this juncture to introduce the fifth and former president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago to make his reflections and pay his tributes to the fifth prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Please welcome Anthony Thomas Aquinas Carmona. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the measure, depth, and integrity of a man are often exemplified by how he displays the attributes of his humanity, his God-given gifts and talents, and particularly how he treats his fellow man, more so those at the lowest rung of the social, economic, and political ladder. Coming from the bowels of the working class, former Prime Minister the Honorable Basile Upande knew of the corrosive quality of social insignificance, apathy, indifference, class and ethnic discrimination, and that that poverty needed to be arrested and mitigated to give meaning, esteem and self-worth to those so ensconced. The avenue available, tried and tested for uplifting the indigent and lost souls was the ameliorative and redemptive power of education and religion. The humane temperament, social consciousness, and meritocratic approach of Baz, as he was fondly called, was critical in his dismantling of the common entrance examination to allow for a greater social mobility that would allow everyone a chance to matriculate for university. Passing for prayers was an exceptional feat in the midst of failures aplenty in the common entrance examination. It is only someone sensitive to the trauma of failure in common entrance examinations in the country districts who would gravitate with compassion to that nirvana, nirvana of allowing all a chance at tertiary education by abolishing the exam and ensuring every student was placed in a secondary school. I personally experienced that, that trauma when I passed for prayers with nine others who passed for other schools. And out of that class of 60 odd, some 50 failed and were in tears. So I quietly applauded Prime Minister Basde Upande as leader and Kamla Prasad Bisesa, Minister of Education, who dismantled this punitive regime of exclusion and allowed everyone a chance at matriculating for university level education by attending secondary school. In those days to enter university, you had to have five O-level passes and two A-level passes, the equivalent of five CSEC and three CAPE subjects. You know, you know what, there are, there are many slow beginners who benefited from that Pande Persad Bisesa initiative who inevitably excel to become doctors, engineers, lawyers, and successful businessmen and women. Bande Pande never regarded himself as a spent force after leaving office, because he was all about affirmative change and social transformation. And he did not require an official or elected office, for he appreciated the force of moral suasion and influence, which his very presence and personal aura encouraged, inspired, and motivated. He was always the militant sage and philosopher. He recognized only too well that the politics of poverty, dependency, and divisiveness was undermining the very tenets of our democracy. That ours was a democracy with a vested interest in the retention of a status quo, mired, vested, and practiced in an emerging institutional ignorance and, and backwardness. I am sure, and such was his consciousness, that had he been one of our leaders at Marlborough House in England, negotiating our independence in 1962, 
he would have demanded compensation from our then colonial masters and reparations for slavery, indentureship, and the genocide of the First Peoples. If these critical and relevant components had been placed on the table of negotiations, and had the Basde Pande been there among those representing us, I am confident that there would have been no capitulation on these issues. Basde Pande was nobody's house slave. He bemoaned the constitution bereft of the, of the bootstrings of real social and political mobility, security, and equanimity. What was patently obvious was the inadequacy of a constitution that did not address comprehensively the social and political challenges of our burgeoning democracy and the needs of the proverbial small man. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot interpret an omission as a rejection, and I refer specifically to the national award, the Order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Basdev Pandey never officially re rejected the ORTT. He never contacted me as president on the issue, and never wrote to me officially as president. There was all kinds of comments on this issue in the press, but nothing was officially relayed to me by Mr. Pandey. The president cannot act on Desi and Demsi. When my secretary contacted the Pandey home, she spoke to his daughter, who stated that her father was out of the country, and she cannot speak for him on that issue. And she was totally correct. Mr. Pandey had been out of the country for several weeks, possibly months. Sometimes when we met socially, I would engage in banter with him, asking him, Baz, when you're coming to collect the people thing, boy? And then I would go official, saying, Mr. Pandey, delay and omission do not constitute or add up to being a rejection of the ORTT. He would then laugh and say, that is why you were a judge the way you're seeing things, and we would both end up laughing. I therefore wish that the authorities consider having the family received on behalf of the former PM, the Orautiti posthumously, and that he be given his just due for his contribution to TNT's development, so that he can be addressed at his funeral as former Prime Minister Basde Pande, O-R-T-T. It would be a fitting tribute to the general who always considered himself a soldier, yes, a proactive soldier, in the trenches of social, economic, and political reform, development, and advancement. Anecdotal forays into the life of, of the Baz are plenty, and some like this one I'm about to relate is a bit risque. I recall as a student of law school in St. Augustine, going to a large political meeting in Tunapuna, on the eve of a general election. And Bass had mounted the platform breathlessly. And though not on the list of speakers, was invited to speak. He told us that he was at another political meeting in the Skuva constituency. And his people there had directed him to leave the meeting because he had won that seat already. And to go up to Lloyd, that is Lloyd's best meeting, who was contesting the Tanapuna seat on behalf of the opposition. He succinctly indicated that he was here to help Lloyd and would win the seat, and that the PNM was worried about losing the seat. That they were experiencing Jariah. So the crowd went quiet. And in his masterful oratorical and rhetorical style, he repeated what he said. And he blurted out, All you want to know what Jariah is? Well, that is when you're frightened. And your bamsi going so. <laughs> I did tell you all it would be a bit ris risky. I recall his addresses at Labor Day celebrations in Faisabad, my hometown. There was a buzz, and among our friends, we would mention that George Weeks, the then President General of OW2U, would be speaking and will cause thunder and lightning. But we all agreed that Basde Pandey was going to mash them up. Pandey spoke to people power and the uncaring parasitic oligarchy whose concern were profits before people. It was a very proud moment for all of us young people in Faisabad and in environs that Basdeo Pandey would be coming on Labor Day to Faisabad, the seat of social transformation and revolution, 
and that he would be leading the march with thousands from Avocat Junction to Charlie King Corner. I can assure you that he helped nurture in us all, in that small oil tongue, political consciousness and a worldview second to none. He valued friendship to the end of the earth, of the earth especially friends who were not fair weather friends. I recall being invited as president and I attended a function in Bonas village in Cedrus for his good friend, the Congressman Mervyn Daimali, former Lieutenant Governor of California, originally from Cedrus, who had died some months before. A bust, a small statue, had been built of this great, well-recognized civil rights leader. And Bas, Ramesh Maraj, SC, and I were there to commemorate the installation. No other political officials were there to regale, regale this well-deserved moment. It brings to mind how we have treated that other great Trinidadian stalwart, civil rights leader, now deceased Kwame Touré, who is internationally recognized as one of America's formidable civil rights leaders and who has never gotten his just due in the land of his birth. The Cedra ceremony was warm and special. And I recall Bass telling me in one of those rare moments when his emotions were on his sleeve, that Lieutenant Go Governor Daimali helped him in so many diverse ways when he was being attacked politically and persecuted. And just as important, he added, that Congressman Daimali also helped his community of Cedrus in momentous ways, not forgetting where he came from, more so when he was at the pinnacle of his success. Since his passing, that Che Guevara beret with press insignia that he wore at a press function has become a defining, iconic look, so much that plenty of people in tongue telling me they want one. Just as, in fact, as Stephen has mentioned. Bass augmented the legislative agenda of the country in a progressive and defining way, ensuring transparency, accountability, justice, and rights for all. He ensured that our nation's patrimony benefited all strata of society, and not just a select few. His militancy against the so-called parasitic oligarchy about and the indifference to the plight of the dispossessed was legendary. Finally, I stand here a proud pressman, proud of the contributions and the life of Basde Pandey, former prime minister, but also for the genuine display of inclusivity shown here tonight by this college. Yes. I am so proud of you all for how you all have conducted this, this sacred ceremony in celebrating the life of a Hindu student. Because in fact, at Presentation College, we are all one. I want to thank the Pandey family for giving to Trinidad and Tobago a true visionary, a statement, and a pioneer. And my heartfelt thank, thanks, condolences to Mrs. Omar Pandey, Nayala, Nicola, Michaela, and, Vasa, and Vastala. And I cannot forget, in fact, my good friend, Subhash Pandey, and his wife. I know it's not easy, but we need to invoke the power of God to pray for his soul to attain moksha, that is freedom from the eternal cycle of life, death and rebirth. This is the ultimate goal of an individual who practice Hinduism. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for your, your patience, but most of all, I thank you for the unity that you have displayed over time and time again at this August institution called Presentation College San Fernando. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Carmona, for that riveting presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we started to organize this function on Tuesday, um, we got in touch with the Pandey family. Uh, Stephen Samlal Singh um, took responsibility for that. And um, up to today, we were in touch with them. They said, listen, Subhash Pandey will represent the Pandey family. 
It is my pleasure at this moment to invite to the podium Subhash Pandey, who will address us. In, in Tickle Basri style. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Having heard all these powerful statements made in relation to my brother, I want to say, on behalf of my family, thank you, Presentation College. Thank you, the forefathers of Presentation College. For without this college, we would not have this ceremony today. Master Pare, my brother, was born a Hindu. He eventually went to a Presbyterian school. He came to this August institution, and he always boasted his wife was a Muslim. So therefore, he was an oral just man. And um, many people think as I do, think as I do, that he was, a, was an enigma. And up to now, in his death, half of the things he did, I, I still don't understand it. My brothers, but before I go there, I want to say, or to give you a snippet into his life. He went to St. Julian Presbyterian School, which was a, about four miles away from home, walked school barefoot. And I remember my father saying, when he come home, the pitch was hot and make, made bubbles. He said, dig the pitch. And when he come home, all he finger is black. He, he grew up a very hard life. However, he was a bright boy, and he got an entrance to <clears throat> Presentation College. My father, or my parents, were very, very poor. When Basti was born, my maternal parents probably had come here 20 years before by the SS Ganges. So we were still in that stage of post-indentorship, and we didn't grow out of it to become businessmen. So that is why Basti grew up hard as that. When he came to Presentation College, Oh no, my father couldn't pay to, to pay the passage to come to presentation. The Dubais decided to take him and help him, and they took him at 7 Ambad Street, San Fernando, from where he came to the school. And he did well, and um, then he was told, you will permitted to come here for the duration of his studies, go back home. And when you hear the kind of work he was placed into, he was just thrust from here into school, back into the garden. <clears throat> and um, at that time, parents thought he was the eldest son, and parents thought that, well, he is there now, they're going to milk him. Milk the cow, you have to help the other children. The leader must, the eldest child, must see about the younger ones. And that is why when he went back home in St. Julian, only garden you're, you're, you're facing up with. And that's why he ended up in the garden, in the lagoon, planting rice, um, driving mule to take Kane City Estate to the upscale. And I'll get a little joke. The mule he used to drive, name was Brush. As only last week I found out, the mule was bought from Brushes in the um, Philippines. And my father named the, the mule Brush. So, <clears throat> Brush did this work, but he always wanted to go forward. He always wanted to, to he couldn't stand working in the, in the Galagoon. And he squirreled. He said, I go to school for so long, what are you doing this? But they had nothing for him to do. Then they got this job in the uh, Williamsville to wake in. 
He said, I go to school for so long, and I, I, I just have to take a number from my scale and write it down. I can't take that. And he was very anxious and to go forward. Then <clears throat> somebody got him a job at the Vedic school. And from there, he wrote the civil service exams. And he <clears throat> began working in the public service as a magistrate's clerk. And it seems to me that the, you'll be surprised that his boss, the magistrate, was late Justice Nur Hassan Ali. And it would appear to me that Justice Hassan Ali had some influence in him. And that focused his life on law. But what caused him to go? <clears throat> As I said, they thought that he, having quali been qualified, though little as it is, should take the burden to help. And my mother, and he teamed up, and my father, and said, boy, you save your money. I want you to go away. I want you to study. And that created a conflict in home, the home. And uh, something happened which I'll keep in my heart till I die. But merely to say, that when he went out to, in the afternoons when he finished work, he used to go to drama classes with Mr. Bess and as somebody said, Lloyd Phillips. And Brian, your grandfather, Mr. Huggins, was very friendly with them. And when they come home in the night, he went to sleep many nights hungry. And um, couldn't take it again. And when my father realized <clears throat> that he and my mother stood up on him. Father started on leash pressure on him, and my mother. And he thought that couldn't take it anymore. And he, <clears throat> and he, somebody lent him a hundred pounds to make up the passage, and he went to England. How many people say he went to England, he worked as a laborer, is because he didn't have a cent when he went up there. And he knew he was going to do law. Um, but when he went up there, he said, the things were hard, and they had to work 16 hours a day. And as a laborer, they were running cables in the trenches um, to connect electricity houses. And he used to be working as a laborer, mate, uh, no, as an electrician mate, laborer. And then <clears throat> he thought he couldn't, couldn't take this pressure anymore. And the money, the little money he collected, he went just as lucky to the Royal, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. And there he studied um, drama. And then, he, as, as um, our friend said, he did parts and plays and things. And he got this one, these little few snippets in the, <clears throat> these movies. But the problem was, if you were white and you wanted a brown man, they said, the, the, paint the white man brown, but never paint the brown man white. And he was discriminated, and he saw the discrimination. And then he started to, he had to leave. He said he couldn't take it again because discrimination was heavy. And he <clears throat> then took the money that he got there, and he studied law. He did fairly well, and then he got a scholarship and went to University of London, and he did the PPE degree, Politics, Philosophy, and Economics. He did very well in the studies, and then he was given a scholarship to go to India to study, to, take, to do a PhD in politics. But because the condition left my mother in, she came back home to see my mother before he went across to Delhi. And when he came here, he met C.L.L. James, Steve Maraj, Clive Phil, Joe Young, O.W. <coughs> the working class people, and he knew the pressure he had. Went to sleep at night, nice, hungry. He had that pang, and that, he felt that pang and pain for the poor. And they said, boy, you're going to do a PhD in politics? So you want to teach in a school when you come back, university? They said, and look how many people suffering there. Look how much political work to be done there. And Mr. Mann jumped into politics with Stephen, Maraj, CLR, James, Clive Phil, Nouveau Diaz, um, Joe Young, Francis Mongrew, 
and they form a party called the WFP. And Williams has provoked them. Williams saying, they say they are the workers and the farmers party, but none of them, watch them there, none are workers, no, are they farmers. My brother, that, 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 that stuck, and all of them lost the deposit. <laughs> but <clears throat> he was a person who never believed in perpetuating racism. And the DLP beat them. And then after that, <clears throat> he went into practice. Jack Kershaw took him under his wings. OWTU started helping because he didn't have any resources. And as somebody said, he became the chief cook bottle washer for the Guardian. And being, and he was also a lawyer in the industrial court. And Mr. Man, a lawyer in the day, and a newspaper editor in the night. And some case took place, and he wrote a letter saying, Hassan Ali is William's shoeshine boy. But oh, he got a libel written in steel. Eventually, Al General Wharton defended him, and he got away. But he's always that kind of fellow who didn't care what were the consequences? If he believed he stood for the poor, he didn't mind going to jail for the poor. And that was the demand we saw Bashir Pandey was. But where did it all come from? It came from his own experience of poverty and starvation. That is the, the spring and the fire that kept on going. Many people, in my own rec recollections, Many people see the things that he did, but deep down inside, they really didn't know what motivated him to do what he did. And only in hindsight now I could see that the poverty and starvation, he never forget that. And that is why his life was always on behalf of the poor. And um, then after that, but he was a bright man. So after that, I think the PNM, the 71 election, um, they had a split, they won all the seats, had a split. And then um, Mr. Richardson, member for Point Fountain, appointed him as senator. So um, uh, Richardson told him, we have to carry out the party um, policy. You know. He said, but you have no party. You just jump on the PNM. I go in there and I'm going to fight for the people and I'm not going to be bombed by you. And he said, the Senate, when he went to the Senate, he really excelled. Many people thought that it was on the outside, but his oration, his contribution in the Senate was really was astounding. And there, the people saw who he was. So he lived his whole life fighting for the poor. Then later on, he came and they um, formed out the alliance. And that was, uh, after what there was, that was, there was Bloody Tuesday, where he got a good few butter and he jumped over Susu Marshall wall and went and hide. <laughs> so he had it, and he wasn't one of those who got a university degree, came out and just lectured to you. He lived on the ground and he lived with the people. And that, he went along, but he was a brilliant man. Brilliant. Many people say, Bastille is an enigma. I want to agree with him. Because you say something today, and tomorrow you say something else. But he was so eloquent. Um, some quips have, have people laughing. For example, somebody tell him, just luckily you want a dog, with the dog. But the other one is, somebody say, Bas, boy, they go stab you in the back. You see, now they can't stab me. My back full of hole already. There's no place for the next hole. <laughs> it quips. Um, and he kept on, and he going. And as an enigma, he would say something that I up to now don't understand. Brothers, I do have a bad bone in my body. But next, two, two, two days after, you look at a man. 
So I said, well, in my mind, what's going on here? But he said, oh, you don't understand? I said, oh. He said, politics is war. And then a war started a fight. He said, politics is a substitute for well, a civilized, a part of, uh, politics is civilized war. And I couldn't understand how this man had going. One thing he does is something, do something, and say something, and the next day, something else. It was really an enigma. However, and then the next thing is, when he, um, all this man, you say, I don't have a bad bone in my body. When he lost the leadership, oh, there's thief, there's that, there's, and fighting on the wire. But then, as an adult now, and I look back, I saw it, he was only human. After he <coughs> came out of politics, well, everybody knows what are his, what are his contributions, so it didn't no, make no point to tell you about that. When he came out of politics, he began to read a lot of philosophy. He began to try to make peace with himself. And Pandit Maharaj, when you said that, he said that in order to be happy, he said from, from here is birth and here is death, and in between how you live your life. And he was telling us, Try to make yourself happy. Regardless of what religion you're in, make yourself happy. You don't have to change religion to, um, to make yourself happy. And he went further after he, sub, after he wasn't, was, wasn't active in politics. And he developed the idea. And he said that in order to be happy, you have to get the negatives out of you. Stop hating. Stop bad talking. And the five tenets, no greed, no envy, no jealousy. But he said here, hey, but you leave a, you leave a space in, in that spot that you had all this anger and hatred. He said, if you don't deal with it, you'll be like an alcoholic. You'll go back and start drinking rum, and you'll go back, like, like drinking rum, and you'll go back and, um, in the same bad way. And he said, the way to deal with that was to fill that spot with happiness, with honesty, with integrity, with respect. So what he said, you must fill that, that vacuum with goodness and kindness so that the bad part of your life, what you're thinking about, would not come back. And that was the last development he had for the last maybe a year or two. And that is why um, in the beginning when he demitted office, because he was there for so long, he could not, as a human being, he couldn't deal with it. And that's why he said, make all kinds of crazy statements, the thief, the this, the that. Um, and eventually, about a few months ago, he started to accept it and even laugh at the situation. He says, when I left politics, I started doing so and so. Oh, no, no. When politics left me, I started doing so and so. He came to the conclusion that life had to go on and he wanted to move on another plane. And there is where he went to the deep philosophy and try to justify. In hindsight now, I feel he was preparing for this faithfully. So my brothers and sisters, again on behalf of my family, on behalf of Basil, by his children, his wife, by the way, he had a good wife who took care of him. Otherwise, I don't think he would have lived, he would have lived so long. And on behalf, I say, of my family, and also, all the poor people who he helped, that was because this institution molded him. And to, for that I say, thank you presentation. Thank you for giving us a man who had, was able to change 
some direction in this country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pandey. Um, I just want to get the fifth video, um, Terence, when he received the famous beret from presentation. Very good. Could we bring up the Calypso, um, Terence? His love for the people of Trinidad and Tobago and his desire to unify the people of Trinidad and Tobago. I am told that this um, song by David Rudder was one of his favorite songs, the Ganges and the Nile. We'll now play it um, for you. Is it come to this? You see, you are a better soldier. No, Terence. That is Hammer, no.
Terence. Terence. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have some snack plates at the back uh, for you. Um, please feel free to help yourself to the snack plates and the soft drinks at the back. We will now introduce the Prez Men's Choir, who will do two numbers for us this evening. The Lord is my shepherd, and followed by he ain't heavy, he's my brother. Please welcome the Prez Men's Choir.
Thank you very much, Prez Choir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to apologize profusely and sincerely to any of you who wanted to come up during the open floor uh, session. Unfortunately, because of the time, and I respect all of you, um, we felt that we should skip that um, segment. So forgive me. Um, Bass knows how you feel about him. Trust me. I would now like to call on uh, Vice Principal, Mr. Kirk Phillip, who will do the vote of thanks and close off um, the session this evening. Mr. Phillip. Before I say thanks, a tribute that just came in from Mr. Robert Lee Hunt former Minister of Public Utilities and current Director of International Development Bank in Washington, USA. Mr. Pandey's impact was larger than life itself, creating an illusion that he would be around forever. But when reality struck on January 1st, 2024, it reminded us that no one is exempt from the passing of time. His journey encapsulated the struggles faced by many Afro and Indo Trinbigonians during the post colonial era. He had a very colorful history in the politics of Trinidad and Tobago. While not without flaws, he possessed admirable qualities that left a lasting impression. Despite his numerous accomplishments, he remained grounded with an innate ability to interact effortlessly and effectively with both royalty and the common man. His charisma and infectious, making every interaction a special one. He was readily available offering attentive ears, sound advice, and pragmatic solutions to any challenge, whether in the office as prime minister or beyond. Tonight, uh, the responsibility has been placed on me to say thanks. That stanza from our college hymn, it matters little weary room in the years that lie ahead. The knowledge which we acquire here shall help a nation to aspire, for we are men sincere. I wish to thank all of you for coming this evening to celebrate the life 
of our distinguished alumni, former Prime Minister Mr. Sebastian Pandey. Your presence here this evening is in true a testimony to his infectious nature, his visionary ability, and the mobilizer that he was. I wish to say special thanks to Principal Dexter Mitchell for his warm welcome remarks, for Tapundit Rujanat Maharaj and Vishwanath Maharaj and Reverend Deacon Roy Raghunanan for their prayers in leading us in this evening's ceremony. To all who contributed in song, to our very own college teacher, Mr. Ravi Sonilal, and Maniram Diliraj, and friends who led us in song. Thank you for sharing your talents with us. Thanks to all of you who would have shared your memories of your interactions with Mr. Pandey. Thanks to our students, Jovan, and members of our presentation, Senior Choir. Before I close, I would like to recognize Mr. Edwards, who led us through this evening's ceremony. For organizing this ceremony, your work, Mr. Edwards, is greatly appreciated. To Mr. Sinat and members of the college maintenance staff, your assistance in arranging this piece to ensure our comfort this afternoon is appreciated. Thanks to all of you you who remain, those who would have been here and left. Your presence helped in making this celebration of Mr. Sebastian Pandey's life a special and memorable occasion. I wish to you, Mr. Subhash Pandey, that you would take all that we had to celebrate today to the family, I continue to extend our heartfelt love and condolences, and be assured of our continued prayers of the presentation family. To all of you, I wish you a pleasant night and a safe journey home. Thank you very much for sharing our celebrations. <laughs> and I invite you to stand as we end in our college hymn.
Uh, if anybody didn't sign the condolence book, please take the opportunity to do so. And please grab a snack before you leave.